Hello my friends, I am back with Because of Mr. Terrupt, January part two, and we are starting off with Peter. <clears throat> we finally earned a class reward, mm, almost. I really hoped Mr. T would come through with us about going outside, so I shot my hand up as soon as class started the next day. <sighs> what is it now, Peter? Mr. T said. Have you thought about us going outside? The school rule says we can't go out in the snow. We can go out on the blacktop, but it's too crowded and there's nothing to do. Everyone was quiet. They listened because they knew I was right. Well, Peter, I like how you're thinking ahead. I did talk to Mrs. Williams and she gave us special permission to go out in the snow as long as everyone has snow pants and hats and gloves and boots. She gave us special permission even after we all saw her underwear? Yes, Mr. T said. I try trying to move us past the giggles that started. Permission for the snow? I asked again, just to make sure I had it right. In the snow, Mr. T said. The key being everyone needs to bring their stuff or else we can't go out. I couldn't believe it. When I went to bed that night, I had visions of snowballs dancing in my head. It was going to be the best class party day ever. Jessica, act seven, scene one. The class bubbled with energy. Mr. Trupp had just, just attached the last link needed for our paper chain to touch the floor. The links were hard to come by with the likes of Peter and Alexia in our classroom, but we did it. Congratulations, you've earned your free day, Mr. Trapp said. A class party day. Peter couldn't believe it. None of us could, really. But Peter was beside himself. The only thing he could wrap his brain around was going outside to play in the snow. Don't forget your snow stuff, California girl, he said to me. I didn't need reminding. It was all I could think about. But not because I was excited. Act seven, scene two. I raised my hand tentatively and waited for Mr. Terrupt to call on me. It was nearly time to go home. I couldn't wait any longer. You have a question, Jessica? Yeah, sort of, I said. I have a problem. I don't have any snow pants. I didn't need them in California. Silence. It was like I sucked all the excitement out of the classroom with a gigantic vacuum hose. Peter glared at me. I couldn't look at him. Then I saw Luke raise his hand. Mr. Trupp called on him. Lukester? I have a pair of snow pants Jessica can borrow. They're my sister's old ones. That a baby, Lukester, Peter yipped. Saved. Thanks, Lukester. That's very nice of you, Mr. Trupp said, looking in my direction. I'm sure Jessica will take them. I could only nod. Yes, Peter yelled. This is going to be great. I thought so too, especially after Luke's generosity. I always thought Luke only cared about himself. Maybe I was wrong to prejudge him. Mr. Trupp sat at his desk smiling. He, he reminded me of the old professor in the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. Did he know everything? Luke. 27 links. That's how many it took for the chain to hit the floor. I was wrong. I had estimated 26. Mr. Trupp had us estimate the final number when we only had five. Most everybody jotted down random guesses, but I took a ruler and measured the length of what we had and the length left to reach the floor. The real problem was that the links were all different sizes, a variable that I couldn't control. I averaged the links that were hanging and used that to help me come up with 26. All right, gang, Mr. Trupp said, 27 links. Let's see if anyone guessed that. He had all our guesses stuffed in an empty coffee can. I was hoping to be the closest. Maybe nobody got it right. He pulled our little scraps of paper out one by one. 21, 30, dollar word, 50. Everyone laughed except me. 23, aha, he said. Here's one, 27. I lost. I cannot believe I was wrong. And the winner is Anna. She must have guessed. There's no way she could have figured it out. Anna walked up to Mr. Trump with her head held high. At least the winner wasn't Peter or Alexia. Congratulations, Anna, Mr. Trupp said. He handed her a homework pass. She was all smiles. 
I didn't need one of those anyways. Yay, Anna, Jessica said. Way to go. But wait, Mr. Trump said. There seems to be one more estimate that's correct. Must be Luke's, I heard someone whisper. Drum roll, please. And the winner is Peter. No way. I screamed inside my head. Of course, Peter made a major production of walking to the front of the room and taking a dramatic bow. Thank you, thank you, he said. This is a great honor. Mr. Trept handed him a homework pass. Get out of here, he said. Everyone laughed, except me. Peter flashed his homework pass in my face. The Elmer sneakers didn't bother me, but this did. I felt hot. My face and ears burned. I turned lobster red. I could feel it. I'm going to get even, I thought. The chain has touched the floor, Mr. Trupp announced. It's time for a free day. My colleagues, dollar word, and I were in for a treat. Mr. Trupp told us that we, could, that we would be going outside. Great, I thought. But what's the catch? Was he going to tell us to bring our shovels, dollar word? to find out how many scoops it would take to clear the parking lot? Nope, just snow pants, hats, boots, and mittens, dollar word. We had the okay for Mrs. Williams to play in the snow as long as everyone had the proper snow clothes. Jessica threw us the curveball, and boy, was it a bender. She didn't have snow pants, talk about hitting us with the unexpected. So who comes to the rescue? Me, I had to. Plus, I like Jessica, she was serious about school and I didn't want to miss the chance to inoculate, dollar word, Peter with a snowball. Jeffrey, it's not your fault. That was what Jessica had said to me, and that's what I kept repeating in my head. The only other person to have ever, to ever tell me that was Michael, his brother. It was just before he died. I have a hard time believing it, but his words still made me feel better, a little better. I need his words and Jessica's because I know mom and dad blame me. They sure don't love me. Why else are they so silent? They don't speak to me, rarely, and they never speak to each other. Dad has started going to work again, but mom just mopes around the house. She hasn't been out of her pajamas since Michael's funeral. Christmas was tough again this year. It was our second one without Michael. Not that we celebrated either time. Dad got a tree this year though. Showed up one day in our living room. I put a few decorations on it. Mom pretended it wasn't there. And that is the end of January. Next, later on this week, we will hear February. All right, my friends, work hard, and I will talk to you later.